What's going on, everybody? It's your boy back with another reaction video. And today we're going to be reacting to three real life Halloween horror stories with photos and news footage proof. I know it's Halloween and it is I think, November 2nd now, but I don't care. It's Halloween until December. 24th so <laughs> even though I, I mean I don't celebrate one of those holidays but anyway I believe this is from Nightmare Files if I'm not mistaken so I put a link in the description of the original video so you go check it out yourself like comment subscribe on his channel all that good stuff all the bells and whistles don't act brand new YouTube's been around for a long time so Without further ado, here we Nightmare Files. Nightmare Files. It make me think of uh, that fucking. Uh, Halloween three, when that that jingle came on <laughs> on the team TV. God, I hated that song when I was a kid watching that movie. I'm 20 years old, but when this happened, I was 13 years old. It's not that long, but it's just weird. At least to me, it is. Hmm. All of my friends gathered at my house at around 5:30 p.m. This was on Halloween, of course. We hung out for a while playing video games and calling girls until the sun went down. Eventually, we all went randomly calling girls. We all had on masks, no costumes. We thought we were too old to wear costumes. We lived in Long Island, so there were plenty of people outside everywhere. You're too old to wear costumes, yet you went trick or treating. Or did you just go out? Because there's a difference. Because I myself, when I was like 16, I went out, I didn't go trick-or-treating, obviously, because I didn't really celebrate Halloween. Um, but I went out with friends, driving around, and maybe egging people's houses. But I didn't, hey, I didn't hit any windows or nothing. I made sure I either threw it short or I hit the roof. So I'm, a, I'm the good guy here. All right, don't don't judge me. And we also made TP some people's houses. But anyway, so an hour goes by and we stopped by an apartment building at the end of a cul-de-sac that had people handing out candy in front of it. There was this one guy that seemed normal. And once we got to him, we said trick or treat. He seemed very nice, sort of. I say that because he was very charismatic when he was talking to us. And then all of a sudden he went from laughing and grinning to just a blank face. This Stop talking to rape us, face. A bucket of candy down, and he just went inside his building. We thought he had to poop all of a sudden and continue <laughs> getting candy. As we rounded our way around the cul-de-sac, he had, had to take a shit to all of a sudden. At the apartment building, and I saw that same man dragging what looked like a fake body out of his building, and he dropped it in the middle of the street. But the okay. prop body didn't have a head on it. He went back inside, came back out, and the head was in his hand. I got my friend's attention and everyone turned around. Okay. The guy walked to the street, stopped at the curb, dropped the head and kicked it in the street. And he just walked away down the street like it was nothing. My friend yelled out. Cool props, bro. The man stopped walking for about two seconds, mm. then continued to walk. It was weird because he never looked back. He just stared at the ground. He trying to be People Michael Myers or shit? We all walked over there, and we were amazed at how real it looked. Hmm. We continued to walk down the street. A car was pulling out of one of the driveways, but the prop was in her way. The driver got out and attempted to move the prop that was in her way. Then some kids around our age went to go help her because she was struggling. One of the boys went to pick up the body prop and immediately dropped it. At the same time, one of the other boys went to pick up the prop head and yelled out, What the fuck is that? 
as he simultaneously threw the head. <laughs> Everyone started screaming. Yeah, the way he sounded. A grown up walking with what is that? up to the head. What Hoping the fuck is that? Step backwards, covering her mouth with her right hand as her eyes widened to the point where they looked like they were going to pop out. So someone called the cops. Had that damn, uh, we found out that what we was thought that was groundhog like, or whatever that was. <laughs> Scream. The name of the woman was Patricia Ward. And the man we saw was her son who lived with her. Oh, his wow. Name was Derek Ward. He was found. Killed his mom? After that. He was dead. He oh. jumped in front of a moving train. Oh, he killed his son. Looking back on it, I'm guessing what we witnessed prior to what he did to his mother was the moment that he snapped. He literally stopped talking in mid-sentence and completely switched. He went inside and killed his mom. That's what he did that that quick and chopped her head off? On us? Honestly, I always think about that. And it scares me to this day that you can walk past anybody. I don't know. That don't sound know what they're going through and they can just snap on them. Scary, isn't it? I don't it? know. That don't sound like a snap to me. I mean, I, I guess because he, if he was all like, hi, how you doing? And giving out can, and I was like, he just, and then turns around like fucking Michael Myers and walks in and just goes stab his mother to death and chop her head off. Like, but I feel like it has to be something that leads up to that. It has to be what they call like a trigger event, like something. Because that's, if you just snap, like that just yeah, everything's perfect there's no uh there's no like rhyme or reason you don't you don't have a history of like you know killing animals or some shit or having like really aggressive behavior and there's nothing like that and there's no signs of nothing and you just which i mean can i guess can't happen because there have been serial killers that didn't kill animals, but they did. But it was something that led up to them when they started killing people, though. But if they, you have nothing, and you go there and especially chop someone's head off, which seems to be like he did that within minutes, because they left and walked into the street. He chopped the head, unless he had already chopped the head off, and then just brought the body out. Uh, like, what led up to this? What was his home life like? Like, do you have any history of mental illness? This story gets to me every time I think about it, but I finally decided to share it with others after so many years. This was Halloween of 1981, and my 17th birthday was in a few weeks. 1981. By this time, my friends and I have stopped trick or treating. I was a twinkle we would walk around the neighborhood scaring kids and just go to parties. This year, we decided to go to a party. Around 6 p.m., I left my house to meet with my friends, Maria and Gloria, to go to one of our friends' Halloween party. Where all three of us lived, the party was right in the middle of us, and we would just have to meet up there at the party because that was the only smart thing to do. We lived in Brick, New Jersey, so walking alone at night as 16 and 17 year olds, especially as girls, was pretty safe to do. About three minutes oh, into my walk, I walked past a plenty of trick or treaters. Then I headed down a back street. This may sound cliche. Wait, but you live in New I Jersey? Why well, I look like back back palm trees there? The car slowly was this Haddonfield? Ahead of me, almost like they were cutting me off. Two men were in the car, but the passenger got out smiling, but I could see the driver's face. He looked like he wanted to kill me or something. I stopped. Probably walking. did. The passenger then said, Hey, we're not from around here. and uh, We're just trying to find the address. This address. Can you help us? As he were pointing at a piece uh, of paper in his hand. Can you fuck off? He looked back at the driver and the driver nodded. And he took a step toward me smiling. Then he said, Don't be afraid. Just help us and we'll leave. I like who said him, I was afraid but at the same time an older man came outside to throw away his trash the passenger looked at him the old man looked at the both of us and the passenger jumped in the car I heard him say we'll try another one and they drove away the old man okay. asked me if I was okay and I said yes sir so I made it to the party and met up with Maria try and another one Maria was freaked out because she said that there was a car that looked like they were following her but luckily she was on a populated road 
Gloria didn't run into those guys. Struck trying to snatch somebody. So anyway, we went inside the party and had a lot of fun like usual. Close to midnight, we were all leaving. It wasn't a school night, so we got to stay out longer than usual. We all walked outside, and Gloria and I said our goodbyes, but Maria asked us to walk with her and spend the night for the night because those guys freaked her out earlier. We told her that the guys were long gone by now, and it would be fine. That was the last time we saw Maria alive. Oh, no. So the last person to see Maria alive was this police officer from our town. And it was about oh, I thought that was my saw her. <laughs> he saw her walking on a dark road by herself. So he conducted his checks. And about 10 minutes later, he came back to where she was. But he didn't see her on that road anymore. She was nowhere to be found. But eventually, Maria's body was found 18 months later. Damn. Behind a house. And it was the house of Sally Beinwald. Her body was cut into three pieces and was oh. found along with another 17-year-old, Deborah Osborne. Oh, wow. And the suspects were shown on the news. They showed the names. It was Richard Beinwald and Darren Fitzgerald. I would never forget those wow. faces. Wow. Those were the same men trying to get me to help them in the car. Damn. The guy Darren was the driver and Richard was the man talking to me. I look back on that night and realize how lucky I was, but I also think to myself, would that have happened to my friend if me and Gloria would have went with her? I still feel the guilt 40 years later. I mean, I don't really blame yourself, but maybe, or maybe I would have been dead. Look at this smug motherfucker. He's like, I'm gonna punch him in his fucking face. You be. You know what I mean? Let me, let's, let's let me be in a room alone with you. We'll see how, how big you are, motherfucker. When I was 16 years old, I never got along with my stepbrother. My stepbrother is my mother's husband's son. There was one week where we just couldn't stop arguing because he would just try bossing me around all the time. And I'd always come back at him about him still living with his parents at the age of 24. And there have been times when we would get physical with each other and our parents would have to break it up and kick him out. After kicking him out, they would always let him back in. He always had mental issues. Oh, don't that's tell why me he's he going to live with his parents. He's going to be the he one to kill so him. mad when I would bring that up. I just didn't like the guy because he had also hit my mother before and stole her. Car. Oh, hell no. Anyway, the week of Halloween, which that week was on a Sunday, I decided to go over like, to yeah, my like, house for the weekend. Uh, hold on. But I would make sure to come back on Halloween. I'd be like, yeah, you got to get the fuck up out of here. Like, hey, you get, you know, people have issues and they move back into their parents. That's fine. But you ain't going to, you know, hitting their mom. And that's what, the, what, because he said he hit his mom. And took her car. What the fuck did the dad do? That's his son. Man, if I'm now, I ain't got any kids. But if I have a, like, let's say I was in this situation, I had a kid, and then I married somebody else, and they got a kid from. We both got kids from previous relationships. And at my and I have a son, and he. I don't matter if a son or a daughter. If they hit. My wife. Oh, you best believe somebody going to the hospital. It ain't gonna be me. Somebody in their ass whipped. And then you're gonna get put out. And be as if I got if I got some extra money, I'll be like, hey, I'll um pay for you to get an apartment. I'll pay uh your first I I I'll pay your first month rent. I I'll give you Couple, if I give, I got it. I will give you some money to uh, pay your first few months for rent. If you don't have a job or something like that, but uh, you getting the fuck up out of here? Ain't no, no hell no. Like <laughs> or like the guy. He said the guy had mental issues, mental health issues. That he need to go see somebody, talk to somebody, and get you know 
prescriptions or something. Because that shit, I, hell no. Halloween so that I can take my little brother trick-or-treating. I woke up Halloween morning very early so I can get ready for church with my father. I noticed that I didn't have a shirt. So I went to my mother's house to get a shirt. It was pretty early around 9.30 a.m. So I knew that everyone was still asleep. But when I walked in, my stepbrother was just standing in the middle of the living room staring at me. He had an odd look on his face as if he was smiling but only with his mouth and not his eyes. His arms were straight down to his side. He spoke to me. Hey, um, how long are you going to be gone? I thought that was weird because the only times we speak to each other is when we're arguing. So I answered, Damn. Well, just a few hours. I'll be back, but I'll be in church with my father. He then said, Okay, I'll see you when you get back. Again, this was an odd interaction between us because we hated each other. His body language was off and his smile seemed different. I went to church, and when we were done, uh, I went back to my dad's house. He already, he's either killed him already, I went home and I or he's game is going games. to kill him. Once I got comfortable, I played for a while, and I noticed that it was around 1.30 p.m., and the house was more quiet than usual. So I got up and knocked on my mother and stepfather's bedroom door. No answer. I went to my stepbrother's room, but he wasn't there. I went back to my mother's room, and I opened up the door. They were still in bed. Then I looked harder and the blankets were over their heads. Mm. I immediately thought that they were pranking me because it was Halloween. I started to speak loudly just to see how their reaction would be. But there was no reaction. So I decided to pull the covers. When I did that, I saw what would be described as heinous. My mother, little brother, and stepfather were all dead. They were murdered. He killed the little My stepbrother bro. was nowhere to be found. I didn't even know he now said know he had he another brother. I was going to be gone. I called the police and they found my stepbrother, BJ, who was in our cabin around 100 miles away. Damn. We call him BJ, but his name is William. William Lissick Jr. He admitted to everything. Wow. He said that when I left for church, he walked into our parents' room and shot both of them and killed my little brother with a hammer. Once I entered the bedroom, they had been dead for about three hours. Damn. This incident happened October 31st, 2010. He has been sentenced to life in prison, but that image will never leave my brain. Oh, man. Oh, I guess he decided not to show. Damn, that's fucked up. I'm surprised he didn't try to kill him right there. But he killed them and he hates him. He killed his father too. But, and I didn't even hear him say he had another brother. He had a little brother, I guess. I don't know if that was the brother from both parents had another kid together. Or was that actually like his brother, like his it probably most likely, yeah, because if he was with his father, I wonder if that's his brother. They both got the same mother and father, and then why wasn't he with him? And they just went to church with their dad. But, uh, damn. Like, you were there. I know he probably was blaming himself, like, eh, if I would have woke them up or something. You know, and where the fuck he get a gun? Like, is it, is, was it the mother's gun, the stepfather's? Well, his, like, is it be his father's gun? Um, like he just hit a gun and shoot and shot them and then went to the cabin, hundred miles. So he asked them uh, how long is he gonna be, so make sure he his he gets a head start. Like he definitely goes to jail because that's premeditated. Like he might have because he say yeah he probably has some mental health issues, but he ain't he's not crazy because he thought this out, and then when that when it wasn't when the boy came back, he's like oh. Hey, how long are you going to be? Oh, okay, you're going to be a couple of hours. Okay. All right, I'll see you when you get back. You know, he just, even though he couldn't hold back, like his, in, I guess his insanity, because he was just <laughs> standing there with, with a smile on his face. <laughs> like, he's so happy at that, what about what he's about to do. But damn, now you, well, I guess he's yeah, going back with his father. But that other story, when that, and that uh, 
what was it? Uh, well, the, the girl died. He said, cut up in three pieces. That was fucked up. But, uh, damn, what was the first one? I don't know if you had the first one. That last one uh, fucked me up. Like, <laughs> oh, um, anyway. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed my reaction to one. If you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button down below. Make sure to subscribe if you're new here. Hit that bell. You know if I know about new videos. Comment down below. Share this video. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.